The three lessons that have had the greatest impact on my life have to do with feelings, with failure, and with finding happiness. A year after I left college, I was given the opportunity to co-anchor the six o'clock news in Baltimore. Getting the six o'clock news co-anchor job at 22 was such a big deal. It felt like the biggest deal in the world at the time. And I was so proud. So here I am, 22, making $22,000 a year. It didn't feel right. The first sign was when they uh, tried to change my name. The news director said to me at the time, nobody's gonna remember Oprah, so we wanna change your name. We've come up with a name we think that people will remember and people will like. It's a friendly name, Susie. I thought, no, it doesn't feel right. I'm not gonna change my name and if people remember it or not, that's okay. And then they said they didn't like the way I looked. They sent me to a salon where they gave me a perm and after a few days, all my hair fell out and I had to shave my head. But even worse than being bald, I really hated, hated, hated being sent to report on other people's tragedies as a part of my daily duty. Knowing that I was just expected to observe when everything in my instinct told me that I should be doing something. I should be lending a hand. I'd cover a fire and then I'd go back and I'd try to give the victims blankets. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night because of all the things I was covering during the day. And my boss was saying, this is the nightly news. You're an anchor, not a social worker. Just do your job. So I was juggling these messages of expectation and obligation and feeling really miserable with myself. And after eight months, I lost that job. They said I was too emotional, I was too much. But since they didn't want to pay out the contract, they put me on a talk show in Baltimore. And the moment I sat down on that show, the moment I did, I felt like I'd come home. I realized that TV could be more than just a playground, but a platform for service, for helping other people live their lives. And the moment I sat down, doing that talk show. It felt like breathing. It felt right. And that's where everything that followed for me began. And I got that lesson. When you're doing the work you're meant to do, it feels right. And every day is a bonus. And how do you know when you're doing something right? How do you know that? It feels so. What I know now is that feelings are really your GPS system for life. When you're supposed to do something or not supposed to do something, your emotional guidance system lets you know. The trick, trick is to learn to check your ego at the door and start checking your gut instead. Every right decision I've made, every right decision I've ever made has come from my gut. And every wrong decision I've ever made was a result of me not listening to the greater voice of myself. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. That's the lesson. So I say to you, forget about the fast lane. If you really want to fly, just harness your power to your passion. Honor your calling. Everybody has one. Trust your heart and success will come to you. So lesson one, follow your feelings. If it feels right, move forward. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Every failure, every crisis, every difficult time, I say, what is this here to teach me? And as soon as you get the lesson, you get to move on. If you really get the lesson, you pass and you don't have to repeat the class. And what I found is that difficulties come when you don't pay attention to life's whisper because life always whispers to you first. And if you ignore the whisper sooner or later, you'll get a scream. Whatever you resist persists, but if you ask the right question, not why is this happening, but what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? It puts you in the place and space to get the lesson you need. My friend Eckhart Tolle, uh, who's written this wonderful book uh, called A New Earth, he puts it like this. He says, don't react against a bad situation, merge with that situation instead, and the solution will arise from the challenge. Because surrendering yourself doesn't mean giving up, it means acting with responsibility. What matters most is what's inside. What matters most is the sense of integrity, of quality and beauty. My final lesson, the one about finding happiness, which whatever has happened to you in your past has no power over this present moment because life is now. Be a part of something. Don't live for yourself alone. In order to be truly happy, you must live along with, and you have to stand for something larger than yourself because life is a reciprocal exchange. To move forward, you have to give back. And to me, that is the greatest lesson of life. To be happy, you have to give something back.